Good morning, Calvary. My name is Todd Minky. Today, I'm going to share my journey to freedom. My life started in Southern California, where I was born to parents that were both addicted to methamphetamine. My earliest memories are of chaos, violence, and instability that often came along with living in an addicted household. My father left rehab, and my parents were divorced when I was five. My mother was awarded custody of my little sister and me. My mother's addictions continued to worsen, and she was often gone for days at a time. I bounced around a lot during childhood between my mother, grandparents, aunt and uncle, and eventually my dad as I got older. There was never a safe place to live growing up. My mother continued her addictions and was spiritually and physically abusive. While living with my aunt and uncle, my uncle would molest me. My grandparents were alcoholics, and my father was physically abusive until my late teen years. Faith was not a part of our lives growing up. My mother was adamant that God hated us and that people went to church were nothing but hypocrites and going to hell anyways. Whenever I would try to attend church with friends or ask questions about God, it was always met with yelling, belittlement, and often violence. My father had credited God for getting him sober, but there was no real discussion of a relationship with Christ. I eventually quit asking about God and took on the beliefs my mother held and quickly be began to blame God for all the pain in my life. Once I tried alcohol for the first time at 15, I was hooked. This became a great way to escape the pain and cope with the continual traumas of my life. I joined the army to escape home at 17. The culture in the military reinforced my ever-growing addiction to alcohol. During my time in the army, I attended church off and on, yet still had no concept of a relationship with Christ and still largely blamed God for not just the suffering in my life, but all the suffering in the world. My belief was that God could stop the suffering in the world at any time, but didn't due to hating all of us. I began to shape my view of God as someone who was just torturing me and blamed him for all the traumas I would experience. I began to drink heavier as time progressed. At 23, I experienced one of the worst traumas of my life when my mother killed my stepfather. This man was a rock and a refuge for my sisters and I through the constant storms my mother would create with her addictions and mental illness. This rocked any stability I had in my life. I solely blamed God for this loss and began to hate Him. I believed that as soon as I got any stability, God would crush me with something new, as this seemed to be the pattern in my life. I sought counseling with the VA and began to heal, yet still blamed God for the pain. I eventually started to go to church at Calvary due to pressure from my girlfriend, but always showed up a little late and left a little early to avoid any conversations with people. I went weekly in hopes that it would change my partner and ultimately make my life more peaceful. The message went in one ear and out the other as I pointed fingers all around me and never looked at the mess I was creating. In July of 2017, we lost our two-month-old daughter. I blamed God. I was furious that he stole my child from me. This began the darkest time of my life. I was so lost, angry, and started to contemplate suicide as my only option to relieve the pain in my life. Alcohol was no longer able to mask pain as it did in the past, so I quickly turned to heroin to numb my pain. No matter how much I consumed, my pain was always there, just under the surface, gnawing at me along with the anger towards God. I eventually turned to meth to help get off heroin. What I told myself would be only two weeks to beat the withdrawals from heroin turned into a two-year addiction that robbed me of my sanity, destroyed relationships with family, had my children taken by DCS, and isolated me into a pit of despair. During my darkest hour, my sister reached out and recommended a rehab that I initially turned down, but eventually went to in March of 2020, just days before my planned suicide date. In my early recovery, I still resented God, but He, being graceful God He is, sent amazing followers of Christ into my life that shaped my early recovery and led me to Him. Once I experienced the love, grace, and fellowship of these men, I started to come around short church more often and blame God less. I was six months sober when I fully turned my life over to Christ. My life began drastically changing as I surrendered my will to Christ and began to serve. I started serving every opportunity I could at Calvary Parker. Getting out of myself and serving others gave me a sense of purpose and love I had never experienced. Eventually, my serving led me to celebrate recovery, where I've been blessed with a forever family that continues to walk with me through my mess as I pursue Christ. I'm no longer bound by my addictions and enjoy freedom from alcohol, heroin, and meth. I'm now married to an amazing woman who cherishes Christ. I have healthy relationships with family, sole custody of my two youngest children, a restored relationship with my oldest daughter, and a phenomenal co-parenting relationship with her mother. 
My church family has shown me the same grace and love that Christ has given them, and they continue to pour wisdom and love into my life. The number of changes I have experienced are nothing short of miracles from God. I remain grateful to the men He placed in my life and led me to Him so I could experience the love, forgiveness, and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for letting me share, and have a blessed day, Calvary.